what I want to tell you here, what we're going to look at here now is what we call the stones habitat, the rocky stones habitat. Typically, that's where we're going to find probably most of our variety of, of aquatic insects. They love living in this sort of habitat. And if, it, if you find there's a river that you're sampling, it's very useful if you can try and at least include this habitat. So if we took a look, we took a look here at a rock, and we'll have a chance to look in more detail together later. And certainly what we catch here will show us what's on here. This is often where we'll find lots of really interesting things, mayflies, uh, caddisflies, and things like that. So the technique we're going to demonstrate now is how to sample a rocky riffle habitat. So we've, had, we've got our spot here. And you'll see where the water's tumbling. Inside there will be sort of brick brick sized stones. Those are ideal and useful to look at. And Jean's going to demonstrate how he starts at the bottom and works his way up. And as he's doing that, he's turning the stones with his feet or his hands. Okay, and as he's doing that, the water's washing off the little insects that are the things we want to look at and catch in our net. And we're going to look at them later. Okay, so John's going to get into the sample, into the river here. He's going to have his, he's got his gum boots on or his waders, puts a net downstream of where he wants to be. And then he stands upstream and he starts turning over the stones with his feet. Sometimes the, the river is shallow enough, you can use your hands. Okay, so he picks the stone up sometimes, has a look at it. All, at, all the time he's got the net downstream of where he is and he's washing it off with his hand there helping just to dislodge the insects off the, off the stone. And again, like we had before, useful to not just stay in one place for the sampling, but to do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit somewhere else. Always shifting around and visiting different areas. Sometimes it might be deeper stones and sometimes more shallow. Now, if you're going to do this a lot, quite useful to standardize, make a standard time that you would be collecting the stones sample. And typically the ideal would be two minutes in total. So it might be half a minute here, half a minute somewhere else, another half a minute over there, but two minutes in total of sampling your stones habitat. You'll be surprised how much is actually coming off whilst he's doing that. And we'll certainly see that in the sample trays just now. There's certainly signs of life in there. And we'll see more of that just now when we... Oh, lovely. Little flat-headed mayfly in there. Okay, that's looking good. And there's a little dragonfly. Great. All right, well, that's, that's our stony, rocky habitat sample. And we're really going to look inside, see what's in that net just now when we get to the trays. The one area we haven't covered is what we call stones out of the current. And that would be a section just behind us here. Right, so having had a look at the stones in the, in the current habitat over there, we now have come up here to a section which is out of the current. And we're going to have a look at John doing a bit of sampling here for about a minute or so with some rocks in this little bit of a backwater, still connected to the main channel, but just sampling how he would go through and collect from the stones out of the current. So, John, would you like to give us a go and show us? So again, we're looking for the cobble-sized stones that might be in here, things that you can relatively easily turn over with your foot. And he's running the net through there having tumbled them over, dislodged the insects sticking onto those stones and running his net through that water. Right, the next biotope 
or the next habitat we're going to be looking at sampling is what we call the vegetation. Now we looked earlier and we saw uh, on either side of the river, right edge, edge of the water, typically we will find reeds and sedges, maybe some grass growing there, maybe some bushes hanging in the water. And onto those would be some very special, unique little uh, insects that we want to look at. So we're trying here to see if we can find them in this vegetation along the side. So what we really want to do is typically we would sample about two meters of that. Okay. Now two meters isn't just from here to there two meters. It might be half a meter here because it's this sort of soft grassy vegetation. But across there might be harder reeds um, with slightly different vegetation. So we'd do maybe half a meter here, another half a meter over there, and then maybe go across to the other side of the river and do another half a meter there and another half a meter. So in, in total, we'd do two meters. And the, the idea there is that we want to get the, the different, that idea of different suburbs. We're going to different areas on the river, sampling in those different areas and measuring the health in a, and seeing what's there by way of little insects in those different areas. So Jean's going to now demonstrate how we would do a vegetation sample, bearing in mind it would be two meters in total, but are scattered around the river at different places. Okay, Jean, show us the two meters of... You see how he's got the net just below the surface? Okay, and he's using that net just below the surface, scraping it along and pushing it into the reeds and as he's doing that, little things that are clinging to the reeds and the, and the grasses would get dislodged, go into the water, and as he moves the net through, they would be caught in the net. Okay, every now and then he looks inside his net just to see if he's catching anything there, removes the debris, and he looks, giving us a thumbs up there, he's looking, he's looking promising. So he's got some some things that would typically be found in the reeds or on the, the vegetation on the side of a river. Right, so what we're going to do here is look at sampling the gravel and sediment uh, muddy kind of substrate or biotope. So what we're doing is we're looking for an area that's nice and still when you get in with your feet or your gumboots or your waders, you'll feel quite soon that the, what it feels like underneath your feet is quite squilchy, okay, muddy. So that's a, you're looking for the right substrate first. And John's found some of that here. And he's going to demonstrate here how with his, with his net, mini sass net or just a sass net, he's going to churn up the mud with his feet, moving his legs around, whizzing his feet through the mud and what happens there is that the, into the water comes the little bugs and beetles, there's some dragonflies that live in the mud, they love that. They also come up into the water and then we'll sweep the net through that to get the things we're looking for. Okay, Jean, do you want to show us? So, and you, you'll see as he's doing that, the, the water gets all muddy because that's the mud that he's churning up, okay? And in there, he sweeps through the net and catches the little guys that will have been caught and been brought up into the water column. So we do that a couple of times for about a minute or so. Yeah, look how dirty and muddy the water is going as he churns up the mud. Now the idea here would be we find a muddy patch here we also might find another muddy patch somewhere else on the river. It's good to move around and sample all the different muddy patches. Right, and there's the sample. He's got the sediment sample, or the gravel, sand and mud sample, in his net. And we can put that into the tray and have a look at that just now. And we'll see what we found in the sample.